Hi, and welcome to Needle Creations video workshop. Today we're going to work on a crochet deer. This is an intermediate level, so some knowledge of crochet would be helpful. Everything you need is in your kit. We have the fiber fill, our instruction sheet, several colors of yarn, a plastic needle, a plastic hook. You'll also need a pair of scissors and either a tape measure or a gauge check. Now when your yarn comes in a hank like this, it's best if you roll it into a ball. It's going to make it a whole lot easier to work with and you won't have a tangled mess. There's a great set of instructions. The skill level is listed as intermediate. Make sure that you understand your instructions before you begin and practice the stitches being used so that you don't become overwhelmed working on your project. Your kit will come with a 3.5 millimeter hook. It may be white, it may be blue. Many of us have our favorite hook, but we recommend you use the hook that comes with this kit to maintain gauge or the tension of your fabric so you won't run out of yarn. There's five different areas to a hook. The head, the throat or the neck, the shaft, the thumb rest, and then the handle. You can hold it like this or you can hold it like this. The head of the hook is smaller and pointed so it makes it easy to go in, but your stitch should always be equal with the shaft part of your hook and that also will help you with your gauge. Many crochet instructions will include a gauge check before you begin. Having the correct tension, which is how tight or loose you crochet, is important to your project coming out to the correct size and will ensure that you don't run out of yarn. You'll single crochet a swatch and you'll count the number of rows and stitches across to make sure that it matches what your instructions say. Also on your instructions, you're going to see your abbreviations. Make sure you understand each one, the colors of the yarn, the various stitches. If you have to repeat any instructions, you will see an asterisk or brackets. Then your other abbreviations. Each instruction sheet will have great graphics on what stitches are used for this project. If you need a refresher to practice any of them, please check our crochet stitches video. Let's get started. Now we're going to begin with the head. Place a slip knot on your hook and we're going to chain two. There's a couple of ways of starting a circle and on this one we're going to do chain two and we're going to work six single crochet in that second chain. four, five, six. Now you can see there's an opening. Pull the tail and you're going to slip stitch in that first stitch and count to make sure you have your six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch. Pull your tail to tighten and then we're going to begin our increasing. So we're going to chain one, increasing is where we're going to work two single crochet in each stitch. That will give us 12. Single crochet two times in that first stitch. Single crochet two times in the second stitch. This is the sixth time. We had six stitches, so now we have 12. And then we're going to join with a slip stitch. When you're working in the round, you're going to join each round with a slip stitch to that first stitch, unless otherwise stated. Now we're going to move on to the next round where you're going to continue to increase 
six stitches each round so you can keep your circle evenly spaced. So we're going to chain one, and the instructions are written in the brackets where you single crochet in the next stitch, and then you two single crochet in the next, which is your increase. And it says do that six times. So we have a single crochet and an increase. That's one time, a single crochet and an increase. And this is our sixth time. And again, you're going to insert your hook into that first stitch and slip stitch close. Now something you may want to do at this point is take your plastic needle, thread it with the tail, and weave in this end so that will hold it close. And I just work through the stitches on the back. And then you can trim that off so it's not in your way. And we're going to go back to our increasing now. When you work on round four and five, do the same thing as you have, where round four you're going to increase six stitches. Again, following the bracket, two single crochet, and then an increase. And we're increasing six. Now we have 24 stitches, and then you do another increase round, you'll have 30 stitches. Then you'll work even through round 10, and then we're going to start decreasing. So this is how we're shaping the head. It's kind of like a ball. So we're going to chain one. Now again, it's in the brackets. We're going to single crochet three stitches. Then we're going to decrease by single crocheting two stitches together. So we pull up a loop in the first stitch, pull up a loop in the second one, yarn over and through all three of them. That is a decrease. And do that six times. Three stitches. Decrease. Pull up a loop in the first one, pull up a loop in the second, yarn over and through all three. Continue following the instructions until you get to round 14. Then you're going to fasten off and leave yourself a tail for sewing. All right, now at this point I find it easier to go ahead and stuff the head before stitching on the features. So take your fiber fill out of the bag, fluff it out a little bit because it's really condensed. Pull off small pieces and work it up inside and shape your head. You don't want to overstuff, but you don't want too little.
Now, if you're having problems, sometimes using the end of your crochet hook will help. It works extremely well when you're working with really small spaces. I'll add just a little bit more, and then we can finish filling it before we sew the pieces together. Now we're going to make the forehead. Following your instructions, the forehead is worked in the same manner that we did the head. You're going to repeat rounds one through five with your color B, which is the tan. And then we're going to work in rows. So at this point, I've completed round five. We're going to chain one, single crochet, and eight stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now, like I said, we're working in rows. So we're going to turn our work. We're going to chain one and decrease on the ends. So remember your decrease is pull up a loop, pull up a loop, yarn over in three loops. So we've decreased one stitch. We're going to single crochet in the next four. Two, three, four, and we're going to decrease again. So we had eight stitches, and we've decreased a stitch on each end. So now we're down to six stitches. We're going to turn our work again, chain one, decrease. single crochet in two stitches and decrease on those last two stitches. And then we're going to turn again. We're down to four stitches. We're going to work to decrease. So each decrease takes two stitches to create one. So now we have two stitches. Chain one, single crochet in those two stitches. And that is your forehead. And we're going to fasten this off and leave a long enough tail so you've got enough to where you're going to be able to sew this to the top of the head. And there's your forehead. Now what I've done is I've come around and I've placed a marker just so I know exactly where I want that forehead piece to go. And this is where it may be handy if you have extra stitch pins to kind of hold it in place. Now what I'm going to do right now is take that center tail and run it through the opening so I can make those even. One, two, three, four, five. So there it is. There's round five. And I'm going to run just a couple of stitches from the forehead to tack it in place in back so I can stitch it around. So we had five rounds on the forehead before we started the rows back and forth. So I've come down one, two, three, four, five. Here's a little suggestion. If you don't have plastic stitch pins, use your hook to identify your round where you're going to be stitching. And you can also use that to hold it down. We're going to thread the tail and sew the forehead in place. Make sure you keep your rounds even. 
and I tack it down running through every couple of stitches and you're going to work around. Now be careful when you pull this out. There we go. Hold it in place. Now if you're like me and you've made a couple of these kits, these plastic needles work great as stitch pins also, so save them. Just run it through to the back. Don't cut it off until you're absolutely certain that you have it positioned as you like. Now at this point we're going to take our black yarn, cut a length, thread your needle, and I like to do the nose first. And like I say, you don't have to worry about tying knots. The yarn will hold itself in place as you stitch through the fiber fill. So we're going to come up. Don't pull it all the way through. Just pull it up enough to where you have a tail inside. And then we're going to work over rounds 10 and 11 is where I place the nose. Even though it does say in the instructions rounds 8 and 9. This is your piece, so make it work for you. And I make several long straight stitches across the front peak where, where you placed your forehead. And then I come back and then fill it in. See, you'll probably have to go between some of the stitches to get it even. And then at this point, rather than cutting it off, we're going to come over to place the eyes. We're going to come up. There is a diagram on your instruction, so it helps you understand how to stitch this. And the reason I like to place the forehead first because it makes it easier for me to identify where I'm going to actually stitch the eye. So we're going to come in and just shape it as you see in the drawing. and then come down and you're going to create little eyelashes and you can make it your own. That one may be a little too big. Let's come back up this way. And you can place either two or three. I'm going to put two on this one. Trying to come back over here so we can go to the other side. All right, now that we have both eyes and the nose and the mouth features stitched on, again, just follow your diagram working in your stitches. Take your black yarn, pull it through, and again, the fiber fill inside will hold that in place and just clip that off. We're going to take this tail and run it through.
and clip that. All right, so now we have the head ready. I seem pretty pleased with that. I am gonna add some more fiber fill before we sew this together. Now I'm gonna jump ahead to making the legs and shaping the body. So this is started in the same manner as the head and the forehead. You start working in the round, following your instructions for the stitches each round. Then you change color on round three. So we're going to make the first leg and then we're going to join the second leg and this is how we start shaping the body. So on round eight is where you start shaping. So we're going to chain one, single crochet, 12 stitches on the, the working leg. Three, four, five. I'm speeding this up a little bit. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Do not join. Chain two. Now, this is where you're going to pick up the leg that you the first leg you made and right here in your joining you see where you've joined that's your first stitch on that route we're going to insert our hook and single crochet and then you're going to single crochet in the next 11 stitches because remember there are 12 stitches around each leg so that's one two three four five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, now there's your joining. Just kind of stuff the tail inside the leg. Now you have your chain two. Now make sure you keep this straight because it's easy to get this twisted. All right, can you see your stitches here? There's your chain two, one, two. We're going to work into that chain, single crochet, and single crochet in that second chain. See, this is where you started your first leg. And we've already made the 12 stitches on the first leg. Join in that first stitch of round eight. So now you have 28 stitches. The chain two creates four extra stitches. You have 12 stitches for each leg, which gives you 24. And when you're working the front and the back of the chain, that gives you four stitches. So now we're going to work around on round nine. Following the instructions, rounds nine through 14, you're going to work even. So you're just going to work this around and I'll complete, I'm speeding this up a little bit so you can see how. And you may want to count your stitches when you're first starting just to make sure you're working the correct number. And then see, here's our chain. So we've got two stitches here. So continue working evenly around on those 28 stitches. And then you start decreasing and shaping after round 14. This is what your body's going to look like when you're finished and I've gone ahead and stuffed it with the fiber fill. Again, if you have a difficult time, use the end of your hook. Again, begin with a slip knot on your hook. For the flowers, you're going to make three of them. You'll have two pink and one blue. The flowers are made with just a row of chain. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, 12, 13 stitches or 13 chain, single crochet in the second chain from the hook, 
and then in each chain across so you'll have 12 stitches when you work across your row. And again, when starting, I like to leave several inches, maybe three, four inch tail to sew when we're completed. All right, we have the last one. And again, I'd maybe leave about a six inch tail when you're finishing off. Now the way you complete your flower, see this is the front part and this is your back. You can identify your stitches, that's the reverse side. The front side is the one you just worked on. Roll it with the front side facing out. And I'll stick my needle through there, thread it. Pull that through. Same with this one. And then you just leave those there to attach to the top of the head when you finish your construction. And there's your flower. All right, now we're going to jump ahead to the skirt. This is made a little differently. It's not made in the round. We're just going to make a chain. And then we're going to work in rows. So we're going to start with a slip knot on your hook. And I like to leave several inches for a tail. It helps to attach it when you're finished. So we're just going to chain 37. Then you're going to work double crochet across starting with the fourth chain from the hook. So that becomes like the first leg of a double crochet. One, two, three, four. So a double crochet, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over through two loops, yarn over through two loops. Again, yarn over your hook, insert it in that chain, pull up a loop. Yarn over through two loops, yarn over through two loops. And as you work down this chain, this is how the ruffle is created. So that actually, that chain four that you skipped is the beginning leg of a double crochet. So this actually counts as three double crochet. Then we're going to two double crochet in the next chain. That's one. And then yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over through two loops. Yarn over through two loops. Three double crochet in the next. Repeat that back and forth all the way across your chain. And here is your skirt when it's finished. So it creates a ruffle. And the suspenders to hold it are just chains also. So you're just going to make 14 chains on your suspenders to hold it. Now on the leaves, you're going to make five of these. Again, you're working from a chain, slip knot, leave several inches on your tail. One, two, three, four, five. So we have five stitches or five chain. We're going to slip stitch in that second chain. So insert your hook and just pull that through. And then single crochet in the next chain. Half double crochet in the next chain. So a half double crochet is you yarn over your hook, pull up a loop, and then through all three of them. And then we're going to double crochet. And there's your leaf. Again, cut off a tail to use for sewing. So you'll make five of those. And here are all the pieces and parts that we have for assembly to make our deer. The ears, the inner ear. Now these are all made following the instructions, as I've said, working in the round. You're gonna sew the inner ear onto the ear just on the outer side. Then we have the arms. The antlers are made the same way I showed you how to connect 
the legs and the body. Then we have the cheeks, the leaves, the flowers, and we have our skirt. So let's put the deer together. And you can make this in any order you want. I like creating the body and adding the head and then going back and adding the other pieces. Going to start with the head. Now there should be a yarn tail on the head and one on the body. You can use either one when you're stitching. I actually just push that one back up there. I add a little more fiber fill. Same thing with the body. There's plenty of fiber fill to, to make it nice and sturdy. The seams are in the back. You can see where the joining are. Same way with your head. Try to center them. Hold it in place and you're going to stitch by stitch work around. Now you can whip stitch, you can straight stitch, just skip every couple. I like to whip stitch the head to the body. It may be a little awkward holding it till you get those first few stitches. And before you get all the way around, we're gonna stop right here. Let me make sure I'm happy with, yes. And you can adjust and shape this as you stitch it. Make a couple of stitches through here. And then I work it and just leave that. I'm happy with that, so I'll go ahead and trim that. And then I like to add arms. We've already added fiber fill to those. Again, using the end of your crochet hook. And now these aren't as tight. I like to keep them a little, a little looser. And I just kind of hold it where I think I want to position it. And I stitch from the back, picking up stitches on that last round of the body. I don't cut the tail off until I'm absolutely certain that it's in the position that I want. I'll go ahead and add the other one. Okay, now we're going to move on. We're going to put the antlers on top of the forehead or on top of the head. The antlers are made in the same manner that the legs and the body were joined together. You're going to make one piece and then the second piece you're going to join to the first piece and work around and there's your antler. So we're going to start with rounds three and four. So here's your round one, two, three, and four. So right there and kind of position it even with the eye. This is just a visual. You just have to kind of look and figure out where you want to place them yourself. 
So there's the first antler. Now remember, you're going to have ears and flowers and a headpiece on top of the forehead. And again, this is just a visual. Sometimes you just have to kind of eyeball it and see what looks right. As long as you're working over these rounds, you position them to suit yourself. All right, and now we have the antlers. And now we have the ears and the inner ears. And these are all worked in the round. You're going to sew the inner ear to just the front side. like so. Just run a few stitches to tack it down. Not working through both thicknesses, just working through that front. This can be a little tedious, but be patient. Okay, so there's our ears. The ears now are sewn on each side of the antler, rounds seven through nine. So that would be right here on each side. All right, and you have both ears. She's actually starting to look more like a deer. Now we can go ahead and cut all of our yarn tails. I wait till the last one to get everything done. That way, if I've made a mistake, it's easy to rip them out. And now we're going to add the cheeks. This is just one round of single crochet stitches. And again, you can add this before you fill the head and do everything. I find it much easier to work with it after the fiber fill has been placed. I'm going to use the tail from the center, get them positioned. And we're going to just tack this down. And again, I run it through to the back. We'll tack down the second one. All right, so we have the cheeks completed. Then we're going to place the leaves and the flowers. So what I do with those, I position the flowers across the head. So I'm going to put a pink, a blue, and then a pink. Stitch those down. And then take your leaves after you've stitched the flower and you just tack a leaf under and just kind of place them however you want. Take you a little bit of time and patience to assemble all the little pieces and parts, but they're fun after you get them finished. Then we're gonna put the dress on and there's her skirt and we have our completed deer. And if you have any questions, you can contact us via email, help at askacrafter.com.